everybody. So, if you're anything like me, if somebody mentions machine or mechanism to you, well, that's what you think of. <laughs> of course, if you're prepared to face the wrath of those who would guard our good green earth, you can look at this as machinery. This idea of the world as one big machine, one big clockwork, philosophically reached its height probably in the Enlightenment in the 18th century and of course it was expressed in reality in the Industrial Revolution and that was a brutal interpretation which led to the machines that we know. Of course, disenchantment with technology, lack of faith in science has led us to more or less abandon that idea, but that idea isn't dead. That idea is still there, just a much more elegant and refined and perhaps appropriate way. Perhaps one of the oldest mechanisms known to mankind is the bow and arrow. Arrowheads have been found in the Subudu cave in South Africa that have been dated back as far as 72,000 years. Bows and arrows fall into a class of mechanism called the compliant mechanism backpack latches and paper clips are great examples of what is a compliant mechanism. Mechanical engineering a compliant mechanism is a flexible mechanism. Now, right now, I have to admit, I don't know a lot about them apart from what I just said and I read that straight from Wikipedia. But of course I want to know about them because they look really, really interesting for all kinds of applications. So I turned to Thingiverse and I found this. And I thought that looks interesting because being a hands-on kind of guy, I get a, a real appreciation for stuff if it's in my dirty little mitts and I'm playing with it and possibly breaking it. So what I decided to do was stick that in Tinkercad, run it up, print it, and once I've got a print of it, I can play with it. And here it is. It's basically four parts. There's a frame and there's a spring and there's a couple of ratchet wheels and they clip together. And that's it together. And if we press on that top, <laughs> it makes a satisfying clicking sound and those wheels go around. Now, that might seem like a toy, but imagine you had um, something like Tesla's earthquake machine vibrating on the top of there, then of course you're turning that linear motion into rotary motion that has stored energy right here and you can generate from something like that. So pretty cool. I'm pretty sure there are lots of applications for these kind of things. One of the things I really like about it is the sort of Art Nouveau design thing that's got going on here. It looks really nice. It looks sort of natural. Like somebody's bothered to go out and look at nature and replicate what nature's doing. Because if you think about trees, the way they wobble and spring back, that's actually kind of contained in here. If we have a wind there that's driving that backwards and forwards in the same way that a tree branch would spring backwards and forwards, then we're getting a mechanical motion. So this is moving away, if you like, to my mind, from the brutality of the Industrial Revolution to a more naturally inspired kind of design to create a mechanism that we could do something useful with and that is fascinating. I can see three main advantages with this. The first one is low cost. I mean there were no parts in this. Well there were three parts, four parts obviously but no screws, no clips, nothing else. So the part count has gone down and the labour to put them together has gone down so there's a huge reduction in cost on something like that. The second one's got to be efficiency. I mean they're not subject to wear in the same way. They don't have any friction losses and they're able to store energy within the entire structure. So efficiency is going to be one big gain over a structure like this. And for my mind the third the third one is they're easy to make at home. If you've got a 3D printer, you can explore these until your heart's content. But of course, they do have disadvantages with them. I mean, in order to get this to rotate, we had to put it around the central axle. Compliant structures 
can't go through rotation at 360 degrees unless they're in multi-parts like any other mechanism. So the lack of rotation is one. The other thing is, of course, we're pressing it like that. And all the stresses are here on this spring, and that's going to be the focus of the stress. So that is a point that's likely to break. So they're going to be subject to wear and tear there. And the third disadvantage is you have to 3D print them because making something like that by hand in one piece is going to be pretty difficult. So 3D printing is both a pro and a con when it comes to compliant mechanisms. But then we have 3D printers, so they're a great thing to explore for what they could possibly do. They can, of course, be produced in a whole host of other ways. Injection moulding being one good example, but who's got an injection moulder? It's actually quite astounding when you look at these mechanisms, how organic they first appear. Now, we were in the woods and I sort of half joked about it being a mechanism. But when you think about a compliant mechanism and the branch of a tree, how it can transmit forces, how it's jointed, how springy it is. And then you look at compliant mechanisms and you see the organic, almost Art Nouveau-esque look of them. There is clearly a close parallel between a compliant mechanism and what you find in nature. I would think that biomimicry, that is looking at nature and finding out what nature has to offer in terms of solutions to mechanisms and me the problems that mechanisms attempt to solve and adapting what nature's already done in a compliant mechanism using 3D printing is going to op open up a whole world of possibility. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.